Um, thank you, Mr. McGuire. There's so much in this that I think is really important for us to support you in moving forward. I think the quick safety updates are just going to be key. As we've seen, we can do so much with safe hit posts, with paint, with road diets. Um, I think continuing to focus on efficient outreach that includes piloting the projects during the outreach is a great idea. Um, I think to your point, it just makes it a lot easier for people to understand what it's really going to be like and see what the effects are going to be. You know, as those of us who've been on this board for a while have seen projects that neighborhoods have said are going to cause Carmageddon and will be permanent gridlock, you know, haven't brought that. Instead, they've brought drivers who've adjusted to the situation and pedestrians who are safer and cyclists who are safer and transit that's more efficient. Um, I think something that we had talked about before that maybe we missed a little bit in this presentation was the enforcement. I remember you saying that the focus on the five <coughs> tickets, um, the percentage in each precinct and the number of tickets had gone down. So anything that we can do to help bring that back to the attention, including uh, bike lane ticketing, uh, Mr. Vanderloop, Tess uh, Rothstein's friend, and I'm so, so sorry for your loss. Um, but that really hit us all very, very hard, so thank you for coming here today. Um, we, we don't see a lot of bike lane ticketing, and I understand it's such a fast-moving target. When I was riding up to the Polk Street ribbon cutting today, I had to go around two taxis in our lovely new protected bike lane on Lower Polk. And it's frustrating. At least the taxis have a number. I actually could have called them in. But to Mary McGuire's point with Uber and <coughs> Lyft, we, and to, again, Mr. Vanderloop's point with Uber and Lyft, we don't even have a way to report them unless you want to stop and take a picture with your cell phone and then you have no way to get in touch with Uber and Lyft. I'm wondering if we as a city have a way to put pressure on Uber and Lyft, Lyft now being a publicly traded company, to have a way to report these drivers. Um, I think their driver churn is still pretty intense. I don't think drivers last for longer than six months, but we need a way to let them know which drivers are making really bad safety decisions, especially Lyft. I mean, ugh, with all of their stuff about they want to take the city to a post-car environment, mm -hmm. and all they're doing is just clogging up bike lanes and parking in the wrong spots and causing safety issues. Um, Polk Street, as I said, I was at the ribbon cutting, super bittersweet. The lower part of that project is lovely. The middle part of that project is not great. And I know that in our legislation, it's in there to take a further look at Polk Street. And I think we said 12 months after it was completed. Um, I hope that taking a further look at it doesn't happen after a fatality on the bit that doesn't have protected bike lanes. And if it does, that's going to be horrific. But I'll just make a plea that we not wait too long on that one. Um, yeah, it's just the, the upper bit of Polk Street. And I know staff had, it's, this is not to disparage staff, Tom, and not to disparage your department at all, because I saw the plans. Those plans were fantastic. Those plans got watered down and pulled back severely. The plans for 6th Street, I know, got watered down. And that brings me back to what I'm going to continue to bring up is, are we OK with telling staff to make great changes to our streets, to get to Vision Zero, to get to transit priority, to get to a bicycle network, and then are we just going to sit back and let those plans get watered down by whoever, by the Chamber of Commerce for 6th Street, by Supervisor Asha Safai for Mission Geneva and the Red Transit Lanes. Um, and so I really, I would love to hear from other uh, from other commissioners because my fellow board members, if I'm the only one who thinks that, then I'll, I'll stop. But if everybody else thinks that we can support staff better by saying, bring us iterations, bring us maybe what the community finally agreed to or the community who showed up. Um, to Rachel Hyden's point, the community out in Mission Geneva who's being heard is not the transit riders. It sounds like it's the car drivers who are being heard there, and they can all kind of agree and get their minds around pedestrian safety things, but they're not getting to transit efficiency. They don't think it's them. It's not their community riding that bus. So maybe the way we get around this is you bring us more than one option when a project comes to us. You bring us the option that was agreed to in the knockdown, drag them out, however long outreach lasted. And then you also bring us 
the future vision, the, the, the out there vision, the one that's really going to get us to Vision Zero and get us to Muni Forward, the one that's really going to move the needle and see what the board comes down on. Maybe this board has the guts to go ahead and do the projects that are really going to move the needle because I know your staff can do it. We've seen it. We've seen what comes out of staff's uh, brilliant minds and thank you all so much before it gets put through the hopper, as it were. So, um, yeah. So again, I appreciate it. And the quick safety updates, the efficient outreach with piloting, focus on the five and bike lane ticketing, and something. I wish there was something we could do with Uber and Lyft to actually have a way to report those drivers in a, a more efficient way. So thank you, Mr. McGuire. Mr. Chairman.